This is the best antenna I've ever seen in 47 years of DXing, and it just might save your ham radio hobby. Hello, everybody, wherever you may be. This is Larry, Kilo 7, Hotel November. Welcome to Ham Radio Live, show number 26, final review of the MFJ 1788 receive and transmit loop antenna. It is a winner. Let me show you how mine is set up in my property. I have it on part of my roof, 22 feet up. Wanted to get it up higher, couldn't, but here's what we've got. It's on a hemlock pole. I like to keep my loops without metal masks. I want just the loop to be the only metal part in the air. It hears like a dream. It will lower your noise floor and bring up your gain of your signals. It does the job. In all my years of DX, short wave, doing DX medium wave, DXing ham signals, I would use a loop and a loop would make a huge difference on my receive. Long wires, verticals, didn't matter. Nothing compared to what a loop could do. They just couldn't. And this is the best loop I've ever used because it's a receive and transmit loop. It does it all. Now, how it does it is in this way. It's very, very simple, but it's just very cool. It uses a butterfly capacitor, essentially a variable capacitor that's run by the motor at the bottom of the capacitor body there. You see that? It's got the blue wires coming out of it. Part of that capacitor, the fins are attached to the housing. Then in the inner fins, those rotate. The motor rotates those to get you to your best SWR reading. It just works from 15 meters to 40. It's the best antenna I've ever used. And that's no lie. It just does so well. If you're not using a loop antenna, you should be because you'll hear those signals you're missing in all that environmental noise that all dipoles and all verticals pick up. If you're using a directional, just doesn't apply because you've already got an excellent antenna to not only transmit from, but also to receive with, okay? Here's a blown up look at it. Here's the variable capacitor in halfway of its turn of tuning. And at the top, you see the black loop. It's essentially a loop within a loop. That's how a receive loop works. They're fantastic at nulling out noise and bringing up your signals. You have an optimal transmit antenna, right? If you're using a vertical or a dipole, you've done some research, you know, the takeoff angle, the DBI, you know, all that stuff. But what most ham operators believe is that that's the best they can get for listening. It's not. Let me show you why. Here is the rig cam. We're on 40 meters tonight. Sorry, 20 meters. Excuse me. We're at 14.2 megahertz. All right. Now, to tune this loop, I'm basically at a frequency that we haven't tuned yet. So I can show you how this tunes. So I'll put the cam onto the control box, which essentially is about six inches long by about maybe oh, three and a half inches high, and it's maybe seven inches deep. This weighs maybe a pound and a half or more, not much more. It will fit just about anywhere, okay? If you're doing islands on the air, if you're doing parks on the air, if you're a field day person, if you love doing the expeditions, man, this is perfect. I mean, the antenna is easy to store, you can put it on a camera tripod or maybe one of those patio umbrella stands, you know, three feet off the ground, MFJ suggests you put it vertical, okay? If you're 20 feet or higher, they say horizontal. The other thing they say, don't use your internal antenna tuner. This is your tuner, so don't worry about using your internal tuner. And finally, the tuning recommendations are a carrier of five watts to 50 watts. I prefer five just because it's less RF out there to interfere with people's signal. We've all heard and been a part of QSOs where someone's tuning up an amplifier. My gosh, it just drives you crazy. But you know, here's the deal. If you've got a directional, it's not going to apply to you. This doesn't. But most of us have wire antennas or we have, you know, a vertical. 
and we assume that's as good as it gets because, hey, it's great at transmitting, right? Well, yeah, but it's not an optimal receive antenna. That's where the loop does its magic. So think about your radio having an optimal transmit antenna, the best one you can put on it, and an optimal receive antenna. With a loop like this, you've got that. And you have the option with the 1788 or the 1786 of having transmit available on that loop as well. That's pretty cool. The 1786 will do 10 through 30 meters. So if you like to work up high at 28 megahertz, you got it. You can work 10 and 12. On the 1788, you get 40 meters, which everyone knows that's in the nighttime DX band. So you get 40 on the 1788. That's what drew me to it because I love to work 20 during the day and 40 at night. Okay. Let's show you how easy it is to tune it because it really isn't a big deal to me. And I'll, and I'll go over also what my SWR readings are on this. Okay. Here's the box. Essentially, it's the control box that, you know, powers up the little motor through a low voltage line in the coax cable. It's powered by a small wall wart, an MFJ wall wart that powers up this box. From here, it sends the signal to the antenna to turn the capacitor. All right. We'll use down. We're going to be at 5 watts and be using CW. The push to talk switch on the mic will be our carrier. Okay. So similar to using a key. Now, the antenna is automatically turning that variable capacitor. Now, if you see that reflected needle dip, we know that we've just passed the resonant part. And on this antenna, the resonant part is right about 1.2 to 1 to 1.1 to 1. It's pretty close. So we've got a beep and it tells us to slow tune up. Now, we've tuned a little bit going down. We're not going to do that. If we go, if we try and go back to auto band select up, we'll get a beep. See? So, to avoid that, hit the carrier quickly and quickly press and depress the fine tune up button. Now, emit the same 5 watt carrier and hit the up button and wait for the dip. Let's zoom in to the meter and watch the dip. Once the dip hits, let go of the PTT switch or your key. You'll see it. It goes pretty quickly though. It's a very quick dip. What is essentially doing right now is it's simply finding that optimal place of SWR so that you can use the antenna transmit. There was the dip. Now we hit the button and it tells us, okay, we got to move down. Now's when you're going to use that slow tune. Okay. So emit the same five watt carrier. And by the way, our SWR right now is about 4.5 to one. Okay. We go down and watch the reflected power needle. It's going to drop very quickly and bounce back up if we're not quick enough. See, it doesn't take much. That dip is very quick. And what I'm doing on my end, honestly, is I'm not even watching the needle on this box. I'm watching the SWR on the rig because I know about where this goes when it gets to where it needs to be. And there it is. Okay. So, let me move this back and show you the rig so you can see the SWR, okay? Right there, about 1.1, 1 .1, right? Now, I've got it to go lower than that in the past. I really have, but the point is for this, I want to be a quick review so that you can see basically how it tunes and explain to you this thing really works, okay? Let's go to 40 meters. It's nighttime. You see it's 2.09 in the morning here Pacific time. Let's move to 40. That's where everybody's at. So we're going to move to 7190. Okay. 7190. Move over to SSB. All right. So 
We moved back over to CW, and we're at 5 watts. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this camera back and show you just how quickly it tunes and how easy it is, okay? You've just essentially went from 14 megahertz down to 7.189, 7.19, right in that area, right? So what we're going to do, we're going to push the down button. But on 40, this antenna is so solid. It's going to nearly auto-tune us right to one and a half to one. Then we just have to slowly tune the fine-tune to bring it right at a perfect one-to-one. -one. Watch. I don't have to touch a thing. It's simply going to stop at the maximum close SWR and then... I'll fine tune the rest. It's absolutely stunning how this antenna works and it's so easy to use. I'll show you another little thing with it too once we get to 40 meters. See, there it goes. So we're now at basically 1.7, okay? The button now says to tune up and tune up gingerly, okay? I'm gonna try and give you more of a view of the meter, okay? See, coming down, you have to go very gently with it because it will go quick. That one-to-one -one is quick, but I can assure you on this antenna, it stays, it stays right at one-to-one -one the whole way from seven to 7.3. Let me move over here, and please understand, it's very windy here. In fact, our power has blinked on and off a couple of times. We've lost power once. There's some pretty bad fires north of us here in Oregon, and we're dealing with some issues of weather. So the antenna's moving just a little bit. That's going to make a little bit of an SWR quirk, but it is going to go to one-to-one. -one. Here is the SWR. You can see it's moving around, and that's simply because of the wind, okay? That's what it's doing right now. Now, let's say, for example, we've worked at 7190, okay? Let me zoom out, show you 7190 again on the rig cam, so you can kind of see where we're at. There's a great net here at 7190. It's the Worked All States net. A lot of stuff goes on here. A lot of people log in all the way from Australia to Panama and the 50 states. It's a great way for you to get your all states certificate. All right, now, if you want to go down, say, for example, you want to go to the DX net. That's at 7163. Jimmy, WB2REM, runs this, and he does a great job, all right? We want to go down here. We want to talk with Jimmy and the gang on the East Coast. Jimmy's in Florida. Now, all we do is we move again Remember what we've done. We've went from 7190 to 7163. So we've went down in frequency. So we want to go down, press the down button on the tuner here on the super high Q loop remote control. We're going to press the down button because we've went down in frequency. Simple to remember, isn't it? Watch. Look at that right away. I mean, that was, what, half a second? That's all it was, half a second. We're going to just fine-tune like we did before, and keep in mind, fighting some pretty nasty wind here. We really are. And keep in mind, when I'm pressing this, it, it is, oops, sorry. I was a little bit concerned the wind had maybe knocked something loose because it is howling out there. There we go. All right. So let's take a look real quick at the rig cam. Look at that. One to one. Again, I'll key it up. One to one. Just a second. Let me ID real quick. Kilo 7 Hotel November testing. All right. So that's how easy it is. Okay. And 
Let me move you to me instead of the underside of my monitor. Sorry about that. This is the best antenna I've ever used. Quite honestly, it really is. I've been able to work a couple thousand miles with it on transmit. I've been able to null out an incredible amount of RFI from a power transformer. This is the quarter of my property. It has delivered on every single performance item I would expect from a receiver plus allowing me to use my transceiver as well. It just works. It really does. If you're at the point of your life where you're going to be going into assisted living or you're going into maybe a, I don't know, a, a condo or a townhouse and you can't have antennas there, you can now. This antenna will save your ham radio hobby. It will because it's easy to put up and it's simple to take back inside. This antenna is light and easy to use on de-expeditions and it'll work up to 150 watts. Truly, it's a very special piece of equipment. MFJ is an American company. I like to buy American. I like to support our companies. So I hope you do as well. Folks, there's a lot to like here. And I've got to tell you, in 47 years, I've waited for a really great antenna. I've had good ones. I've had great ones. I've never had one that's this great. The, 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 just the, off the charts, it's totally hard for me to put this into words because it's that good. MFJ 1788, receive and transmit loop antenna. If I had three hands, I would give it three hands with thumbs up, but I can only give you two, but it's worth every penny of it. Enjoy. I hope you've enjoyed the review. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments section. I do extremely highly recommend this antenna for you. It will work. It'll work 40 meters and it will work 15 and 30 and 20 and 17 and you'll be smiling because you don't have to worry about blowing it up because it's only a receive antenna. This one transmits too. Thanks for watching everybody. See you soon. This is Larry Kilo 7 Hotel November. God bless you. Thank you for watching everybody. See you later.